Susan is our director of our surgical services and when we were working on looking at our customer service areas and what things we felt that we needed to improve on it was glaring that one of the things that we really positively needed for our patients was to have um, some spiritual care in our facility and any and all capability we were just we, we are lacking in that and so Susan immediately stepped up and said let me do this let me um, the passion moved her that this was something very important to her so I was excited she's um, taking the ball and run with it so I'm going to turn it over to Susan Thank you. So again welcome good morning I'm Susan Hamby I am director of surgical services here at Barrow Regional very happy that you guys uh, are here and attending this seminar today. Been working on this for a while, so I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to introduce a Reverend Larry Pope, who has a Master's in Divinity, um, but he just likes to be called Larry. So um, he, you know, of course, you know, all the Pope jokes. This Pope is married. This Pope is not Catholic. He has a Pope mobile, you know. So, anyway, but you guys can say that uh, you met with the Pope today. Can't say that. Um, he has been a pastor in three churches for 17 years, 13 years as the hospital chaplain in Punta Gorda, Florida, and um, one and a half years as the corporate chaplain. So, um, he's got. Uh, a wife, Sarah, for 31 years. She's a nurse and a medical coder. Good for her. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, four grown children and four grandchildren. So I'm going to turn it over to Larry. And um, and thank you, Larry, for being here. We're, we're very excited. Thank you. I'm excited about being here. I told my wife this. I've traveled to all of our 55 hospital clinics. Something about you. I'm like, this is going to be good. I just, just going to be good today. I just can't wait to get here. And I can tell from you all ready to to serve the Lord in some way. It is going to be good. The patients are going to be served, and their families are going to be served, and things are going to be different. They are going to know that this hospital cares not only about their medical problem, but about their spiritual, emotional, family problem. And so they're served in every way. Let me introduce you a little bit about our corporation. Borough Regional here is connected with HMA Health Management Associates, which has 55 hospitals. We just bought one more, so now we have 55. We had 54 for quite a while. In 15 different states, as far west as Washington State, as far north as Pennsylvania, but most of ours are in the southern states. And so I live in Punta Gorda, Florida. Now they're near Fort Myers, if you know that area. And uh, our mission statement talks about compassion, and I think that fits well with spiritual care, pastoral care. The delivery of compassionate and high-quality health care services that improve the quality of life for our patients, physicians, and communities we serve. What you all do is the most compassionate thing. Any, I think every nurse ought to be compassionate. Everybody that does the building in the building department ought to be compassionate. Every person in, in marketing and human resources ought to be, but boy, this patient contact. If we aren't compassionate, it's like we need to find another job, okay? But that's what we do. We come here, and, and we're asking even people to go on your own time as volunteers. If that's not compassion, in fact, I know a lot of people even paid. When I first came into this job, my friend was a hospital chaplain, and he heard about an opening down in Punta Gorda Hospital. We were pastors together. Two months prior to that, he went to one hospital and took a job as a chaplain. Two months later, my job came up, my hospital came open, and he goes, Larry, go take and I go, why would I want to go visit sick people? I was honest. It was not on my platter. It was not on my range that, that I, was a, I was a pastor, and at that time I was a marriage and family counselor, and I loved it. And I'm like, Bob, why would I want to do that? Well, then God got hold of it. And I think it takes a special calling from God to go visit sick people. Because some people may say to you, why would you enjoy that? <laughs> and you go, but I do. I do. I really enjoy that. I think it takes a special calling from God to be able to have that in your heart, that compassion to do that ministry. So today we're going to take a look at the scripture that you've probably heard and read and preached many times before that talks about taking care of sick people and see what the Lord Jesus, how he looks at that. It says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, 
Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I, Jesus speaking here, was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needed clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whenever you did it for one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it for me. Jesus is saying, in essence, every time you visit someone in the hospital, you're visiting Jesus. But he also says at the end of that passage, when you didn't visit them, you didn't visit me. Ouch. Now, I'm not bringing guilt trip today. Oh, no, all the people, I did, you know. But let's start on the positive. Those that we touch as if we're <clears throat> touching our Lord Jesus, we're ministering to him because we're ministering to his people. He sees these sick people in this hospital and it breaks his heart that no one's sitting by them, praying with them, meeting their need. And I'm going to talk a lot about the ministry of presence today, meaning just show up. I mean, if you don't even know what to do, just be there. And sometimes, and a lot of times, I don't know what to do in chaplaincy. I don't know what to do. I don't have the right words. And, and if I actually said something, it would make it worse. <laughs> but when I just show up, and Jesus said, you visited me. He didn't say, you talked to me. He didn't say, you said the right scripture. He didn't say, you said the right... He just said, you visited me. And so we're going to talk about today, about chaplain ministry of being there, of showing up and doing that. I want to give you three goals today. When we gave out that letter and asked you to come, there were three goals there. One was for the minister, that you're pastoring a church, Asking you to come and come on, please. And food back there for you, too. You pastor a church, and you come in and you visit your people all the time. And you probably do that in several different hospitals, wherever your people are. I want to help enhance that experience. Maybe in Bible college or seminary, you got a little bit of training. Uh, maybe we need to be re-educated. Would you like your airline pilot to be re-educated? Would you like your physician to get re-educated? You know, to go back and get some little more training? I think ministers, at times we get rusty. Because I know myself, if I don't get re-educated, I go in the room and I do the same thing all the time. Same prayer, same opening, same closing, same joke, same poem, and I get rusty. So we're going to shake it up a little bit and say, what if we were to do this? The second goal is for those that are members of your church. Now, if you, the minister, get busy, and you do, counseling, sermon preparation, administration, or maybe you're sick, or maybe you just want to have the afternoon off with the family. Would you like, would your wife like that? <laughs> would your kids like that? Just say, I'm not going to answer the phone today. I'm going to call up these members of my church, Mary or John, who came to this training, whom you know know what to do in your place, can say, can you come in for me today? And they go, sure, I want to. <laughs> you know, I like doing that. And we go, well, good, because I need some help today. Now, if you can think of one of those members right now that aren't here, get up right now. Take your cell phone, or you can borrow mine, and call them. They may be here a little late, but call them. Get them here. Because I want this to help you. So number one goal is to help you. If you, the local minister... Well, let me introduce number three goal, is to train hospital chaplains. For this hospital to gain some people that would wear their badge, that would come in on the hospital's behalf and see any or all the patients. Now, if goal number one only fits you, that you're here local minister, you go, I don't want to be a hospital chaplain. I'm still excited about you being here because I want to enhance your ministry. If your volunteers, your people of your church come here and just visit on your behalf, and never become a hospital chaplain, I'm still happy. Because I want to help people minister for the Lord. But one of our goals is, number three, to train those who would become hospital chaplains to visit <laughs> patients. One would be maybe when there's a crisis that you could come in. Another might be if you just say, 
I've got two hours.